Hello, boys and girls. It's your favorite horror host with the most, the horror heathen for the horror heathen YouTube channel and the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest for a movie that has not been released yet. It's called Mole. And so grab your cleaning supplies, your bleach, and your hot water because this is going to be an interesting episode to talk to today, talk about today. Today, I have with me Laura Taylor. She, uh, I'm sorry, what role do you play in this movie? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am Miss Parrish, but she also turns into a monster. Okay, awesome. So you were born in Waco, Texas in 1988. You have lived in Texas all of your life, and you have no plans of leaving. Bless your heart, because I wouldn't want to leave Texas either. <laughs> you have always had a love for performing, even in childhood. You sang in choirs from the age of eight through college. That's a long time. Well, I, that's, yeah. Oh, whew. <laughs> A lot of respect for you on that one, because I couldn't do it. Thank you. You've toured countries like France and Switzerland, which I'm really jealous, because I haven't... Pff. The last time I've been to France is when I lived in Belgium as a little kid. So oh, I, wow. I, I don't remember anything from France whatsoever. <laughs> and as a child, you had your first taste of being in front of a camera appearing in local newspapers, or I'm sorry, local news stations commercials. As a mm -hmm. teenager, you joined an acting class, and you love to perform even more. That's cool. All right. Awesome. Becoming an actress or singer was always a dream of yours. But as it often happens, the dream was put on the back burner and pushed for your education, your marriage, and raising a family. Of course, family comes first. I get it. Yeah. And um, in 2020, you met the CEO of MGI Films, which gave you the opportunity for you to get a break in the film industry. It's it's just funny how stuff works out like that when you meet the right people. I know, right? <laughs> And since then, you've been in two films in 2022 alone, and you cannot wait to see what 2023. Uh, that's all, folks. You cannot wait to see what next year has in store. You have two lovely children. You are happily in. You are in a happy long-term relationship. You attend church in the Dallas area, and you're always on the hunt for a great Mexican restaurant. You play multiple instruments in your free time. And you enjoy drawing and painting as well. Are you like my wife? Seriously. Because you two have, so, you have a lot in common. No, I think we need to meet someday. You do. Seriously. I'm going to have her watch this video. I'm like, good. Get a hold a long of lost twin. Laura Taylor and just talk. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. So how are you doing, Laura? Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor. I'm doing well and can't wait to dive into this movie together. Is I saw the preview and I I'm I'm about to go out of cleaning frenzy and getting rid of any mold I can find in my house because <laughs> I don't want nothing turning me or my cats into a monster. Okay, because it's just it's not going to happen. Definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> so so if you don't mind, please give us a short synopsis of the movie. Yeah. So there's an apartment complex and there's a small bit of mold in one um, unit. And our main male star goes in to try to help. And some of it gets on him without him realizing it. And he's kind of like the handyman for the apartment complex. And so he goes all over, not knowing that he's spreading it. And it gets into his apartment. His girlfriend's all upset because she can't get rid of the mold. They call someone in and he's the first victim It attacks him, turns him into a monster. Then he starts attacking people and the mold just slowly overtakes the building. And let's just say it's not really a happy ending. Wow. So the guy yeah. who gets hit in the eye with the mold, is that the maintenance guy? Yes. Well, no. Um, he's like a mold expert that comes in to try to help them with it. Um, but our main star, he does get attacked, but he doesn't get turned into a monster. I saw the preview of the guy where it shoots that guy's eyes. Like, oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. <laughs> lots of lots of gore. If there's gore fans, you'll you'll get a decent amount in this movie. And I've also seen your profile on Facebook, some behind-the-scene photos of the makeup process. 
Yes. And holy crap, it looks amazing. So yes. So the uh the main star, Gerald Crumb, he was also the special effects artist. Um and yeah, the process of turning me into a monster um took a while. <laughs> And it's the first time I've had to wear any type of um, like liquid latex or anything. So putting it on wasn't bad. Um, but the way the teeth were and everything, it was uh, pretty much impossible to eat or drink for the duration that I had it on. Um, and the contacts I had to wear hurt so badly. The only time my eyes didn't hurt was when my eyes were closed. So when I wasn't in the scene, I was just sitting in the corner with my eyes closed because it hurt to have my eyes open. And taking the mask off was an ordeal. Um, I've done, you know, face masks before, that, like the peel off ones, but this hurt a whole lot more. <laughs> but it was a fun experience. And now I can say I've, you know, worn all the special effects stuff and I can know what it's going to be like if I have to do it again and know that it's it's not for the faint of heart <laughs> you can so, feel claustrophobic a little bit just added to me as I wore heavy prosthetics didn't like it whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> not my favorite thing but I will do it again <laughs> have me drink my eyes closed here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds it sounds fantastic the trailer looks amazing and I can't wait for this movie to come out. I, I am a huge supporter of independent horror films because to me, they see, it seems like the, the actors and all the crew put more effort into it than you see on, on, on mainstream platforms. So I would agree with you there. <laughs> a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this movie. I bet. Cause uh, like I said, I watched um, the take of Deborah Logan. I interviewed Jill Larson yesterday mm -hmm. and that, that's an independent horror film, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it was professionally made. Yeah. But it was made by Terror Films, which is an independent company. Okay. And I was like, oh, my God. And she told me, I was like, nope, they're all independent actors, all filmmakers. I'm like, are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Because it just looks so professionally done. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, like I said, um, the trailer for Mold, it looks great. I mean, the, the, yeah, I, I'm so try I still can't get past the eyeball scene with the shoes into the guy's eye. <laughs> I think I had nightmares for days after watching that one. So, <laughs> oh well, those at MGI Films would be very happy to hear that because they they put so much into every scene, and and this with this one we had a bit of a time constraint, um, so some things we had to kind of just blow and go, um, but for the movie they made after, and even the movie that they're filming right now, they put so much planning into it if they don't like exactly how it turned out they'll reshoot like they want it to look as good as it possibly can for you know whatever budget that they have and honestly in my opinion they work with really small budgets for the most part but they make it look just absolutely amazing and I think it's just they've been doing it for years and they work well together and lighting really is such a key part of making something look good and they take the time like i can't even tell you how many times oh no wait this light has to move or no wait we need a hair light here <laughs> they attention to detail is something that they are really really good at well that's key in making an outstanding movie is that paying attention to detail and being cognitive of where everything is at so what made you audition for this role or were you chosen for it that's a funny story <laughs> so um the well he's kind of has a lot of hats but the ceo of mgi films who i'd met earlier um had given me the opportunity to help out as crew member and kind of just learn how things work um because i really didn't know anything about audio anything about lighting so i was like i'll just kind of be there and you just tell me what to do and how i can help even if it's just oh this actor needs a drink go get him a drink um so I was just around helping. And the day that we were shooting the Miss Parrish scene, they had some issues with the actress. Um, she wasn't able to get there. And we'd already had everything set up. And so we're like, we really don't want to delay this. And so um, the main actor slash special effects artist slash 
jack of all trades um <laughs> looked at me and was order. like yeah <laughs> he was like well do you want to be in this parish because we need somebody right now so i was like sure i guess i mean let me look at the script real quick so it was i was just kind of thrown into it um but honestly i had more fun being the monster than miss parish i, I think i'm better at like <laughs> being scary than being a normal person um so it was just kind of being in the right place at the right time um but i was so grateful for the opportunity and um it was it was a dream come true i really didn't think that i would ever get to be in a movie and so i am eternally grateful to them for helping me uh, achieve my lifelong dream <laughs> that's awesome i'm glad i worked out for you because yeah i'm super glad and happy for you Thank so you. was was besides the prosthetics and the contacts and the the i don't want to say it i would say this in a nice way <laughs> <laughs> the constant moving of light bulbs and lights was there any other any any other hard scenes to film or so the arduous tasks that you had to do while filming this movie? Um, just kind of interesting stuff being when I wasn't acting, my scenes are kind of in the beginning and the end of the movie. Um, so a lot of time I was just crew. Um, and we had one monster who his mask really covered his whole face. He had this tiny little hole for his mouth that we could stick a straw in. So whenever he was thirsty, I was in charge of, cause he couldn't see. So anytime he wasn't needed, I would guide him to a couch. <laughs> anytime he was thirsty, I'd be like, okay, open as much as you can. I'm going to stick the straw in the tiny little hole in your mask. Or let me, you know, try to shove this cracker in your mouth. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> chew um, it, chew it, David, chew it. <laughs> yeah. And just, well, I have allergies. And so I was trying to get used to the fog machine and all the fog. And there's just a lot of different smells when you're on set. Um, but the fog really messed with me. Um, so with my allergies and my asthma, sometimes it was hard to not cough or sneeze. And so I would have to just hold it in when they're filming. And then after I'd be, you know, having a coughing fit and they would kind of get <laughs> irritated at me for that. But I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not used to this stuff. And it's messing with me my bad it's like he's a steve the tuka flap it's, oh shit something <laughs> look out <laughs> I'd, I'd like to say that i'm getting more used to it but uh just a few weeks i was on set for their current movie and yeah i'm still not used to that fog i don't know what's in it that just messes with me but my lungs do not like it at all yeah i i understand because i worked at a haunt in pennsylvania and they decided to put a fog machine in my attraction without asking me oh, or anything. Nice. And it was just constantly blowing into my face. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sit outside for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And they said, well, you have to jump off this door. How about just, if I just jump off the side of the building where there is no fog <laughs> machine? <laughs> so I get it. And it yeah. pissed, oh, I was a firefighter in the military as well. So oh, wow. um, I was, I was, you know, used to being smoked, but, but the mm -hmm. fog machine, Right directly in my face is yeah. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going outside. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get some fresh air. <laughs> I can't breathe. Anyway, so. <laughs> what else is uh, to talk about this movie? Because I, I want to know more. I mean, well, um, so the lead female, Shannon Snedden, she's been in a lot. If you check on her IMDb, um, she's been with MGI. Gosh, I think since the beginning, I want to say she's been in almost all of their films. Um, she is going to be the lead female in their current movie. Um, she kind of made a cameo appearance in uh, Nowhere Land, which is right now still um, being, it's not sold yet. So we don't know who's going to be distributing it. Um but you should definitely check her out. Um, she did a great job in Mold. Um, she was the the girlfriend of the handyman. Um, and it's really sad. I don't, it's like, I want to talk about it, but I also don't want to like give everything away if some people want to go see it. Because it's like, oh, well, now I know the whole, you know, everything that happens. But um, 
yeah, she, uh, she wants to make a better life for her and her boyfriend. Um, and she kind of takes it upon herself, but in the end she kind of destroys everything and yeah, nobody really makes it out alive. So it's very sad. <laughs> that's a, that's a bummer. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and honestly, it's been a while since I've seen the trailer. I can't remember. I highly doubt this made it in the trailer because it's like a, a cute little scene and the trailer is mostly like ah scary stuff. Um, but there here? was there was a scene um, that was really artsy and I really, really loved it. Um, and it was um, the girlfriend and the boyfriend. And the um, the director didn't have a good song for it. He didn't know what he wanted for that scene. And um, he had a musician that was going to be working on a song for him. Um, but he also asked me because he had he knew I had a musical background. He was like, you know, would you be interested in writing a song for this? And I'll you know let you know if I'm going to choose it or not, because it wasn't just me. He also had that other musician. Um, so I wrote a song, uh, came up with some lyrics and he and I kind of worked together to to tweak them, to make them exactly what he wanted for the scene. Um, and he ended up using my song, which really meant a lot <laughs> because I'm not super confident in my writing abilities um, with music or with lyrics. Um, but he said it was a perfect fit for that scene and what he wanted and the kind of folksy rough sound. Um, so I was super happy to get to not only write it, but also perform it for the film. Um, so that's my main credit for the movie is that I wrote a song for <laughs> one of the scenes. Um, so it was just kind of a bonus that I got to actually act in it as well. That is super cool. That's great. Yeah. I was, I was really happy to be able to contribute some way with, uh, with my talents because, I don't consider acting one of my talents because I'm still so new to it. But yeah, Can you just like a, a little sliver of that song, real quick. Oh gosh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't have to feel uh, like it. <laughs> it's like I haven't really warmed up my voice for singing yet today. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's totally fine. That's that's okay. <laughs> I do need to take the time to like put it on Spotify or something because people may want access to the song besides just in the movie. That's true. Somebody might download it and spread a word about it. So yeah, <laughs> that'd be that'd be fantastic. That's the quickest way to spread spread stuff is through social media and, and Spotify. As a matter of fact, yeah, that's how I was picked up on all the different platforms because a lot of people no heard way. my podcast on Spotify. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So now my iHeartRadio, um, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, which is a, a huge platform, right? So, and Overcast and some other platforms I've never heard of before, like. Public radio. I'm like, hmm. Never heard of <laughs> radio public. I'm like, who are those people? So, yeah. <laughs> and also, my podcast is playing in 24 different countries. No way. And it's like, it's like an Estonian. I'm like, how is that translated? I want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> well, and it's funny that you mentioned that because I can't remember which country it was, but we were just checking different sites trying to see where all the mold trailer, you know, was being released. And it was put out in some other country, and the trailer had like sixty-seven thousand views. It was something wow. ridiculous. And like, man, I guess people in whatever that country is really like it. Well, I noticed that um, a lot of um, I want to say Eastern Europe countries enjoy horror movies like a lot. Yeah, I've noticed that so. as well. So it was probably somewhere over there. Yeah, I can't probably. remember. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of my listeners, my podcasts, are in Eastern Europe. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's so cool, though. Yeah. Um. So, is there anything else that you can tell us about the movie or any upcoming projects that you might be able to tell us about that you're in, that you're starring in? I'm not starring in anything that I know of right now. Um, so, the movie that I was the lead female role uh, or character, um, it's called Nowhere Land. And like I've said, it's still we're still working with different distribution companies to figure out uh, who we want to, to go with. Um, so I'm hoping that'll be out in the next few months. Um, their current project, Malice, um, they're still filming it as we speak. Um, so I'm not sure that it'll probably be a couple months as well until it's out. Um, 
and mold is actually already out. I think it was, it was early December. Um, it's on Amazon. It's just not one of the free ones. You have to actually rent or buy it. Um, okay. but it is on Amazon prime. Um, yeah. And I know there are a lot of mold movies. Um, but I think it's the only one that I saw on there that was 2022. So shouldn't be too hard for people to find. Who was like, this is not what I saw in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> That's actually had me before when someone told me, Hey, check this movie out. And so I did a little Amazon start watching like, right. Then I called them. I was like, dude, this is not anything yeah. that you described. <laughs> <laughs> like no 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 wrong one. Did you choose the right one? Like, yeah, He's like no, it was twenty twenty one. I'm like oh, this is from twenty twelve. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's the mold that was put out by ITM Distribution. So make sure you got the right one. <laughs> IGM is what you said. ITN. Oh, ITN. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that in my description of this video so people actually get the right <laughs> one. So <laughs> ITN. Okay, now we're a little before. Yeah. <laughs> well, Miss Taylor, it's been an absolute pleasure and honor talking to you about this movie, and I am looking forward to watching it. And if I ever do a review on this movie, I will definitely tag you in this that way. Thank you. <laughs> that way you can tell your compadres, your friends or whatever, your crew workers, your castmates, whatever. Say, hey, the horror heathen did this, they'll go watch it. <laughs> so. Absolutely. That would be awesome. And I wish you nothing but the best in your career. And Thank you. I do hope you win an award for this movie. If you do not, call me, and I will. <laughs> I will. I will start blowing people's phones up because I've been told I'm very persuasive. So <laughs> that's a good quality to have. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's great talking to you. I wish you a fantastic day and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to your friends and families. You so, as well. And um, God bless Texas. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> my wife's gonna love that part, by the way. It's yes. Like, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you a good evening and take care. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Black mold contains mycotoxins, which are, it's basically neurotoxins. It affects anxiety, depression, and of course it, it can cause hallucinations. Whoa.